Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. I hope you all had a great weekend and are ready for a brand new episode of the Solo Experience. Today, I shall be showcasing the Reaper on the best frontline map there is, on Sohak Air, landing a respectable 10 kills, 41 assists to 1.1 million damage. This match was ideal for today's showcase, as this highlights the strengths of the Reaper and what you can achieve by playing solo, while also showcasing the struggles of my own misplays. Reaper right now, even solo is a solid pick. With your powerful burst and interrupts, you can follow up on any ally play. Thank you all for your continued support. We are rapidly approaching 2,200 subscribers. Welcome everybody new to the channel. Sit back, relax and enjoy the Reaper on Anso Hakir Day. Right out of the gate, this round is off to an interesting start. 4B ranks and 2A ranks. The spawn cap is of no concern, so instead I push mid, while glancing over towards the bridge. With no enemies in sight, we are free to contest the center A rank, in which we are met by a small trio. As the Reaper against a small group, I have full confidence in going in full aggressive, aiming to take them down as fast as possible, or at very least keep them away from stalling the objective. This was successful, granting us the early lead. I also spotted the perfect chance to third party the Maelstrom, should they need to flee from the south. Leading the charge, a small group bravely followed me in. We snag a few kills along the way, resulting in a rather nice flank on the Immortals. However, my group had difficulty committing to any one target, and what could have been some easy kills for the group turned into a wasted opportunity, so I am forced to retreat before I get myself trapped. A slow start, but not a bad one. We have a sizable lead and made some progress towards battle high. Redirecting our efforts north, my team snagged the new B rank. I push past with my team and with a cheeky limit break burn down a fleeing monk. Reaper's limit break charges so fast there was no reason not to pop it here to obtain an easy kill. However, this is where I messed up. I did not turn as I activated my Hell's Ingress. Depositing my dumb ass right in front of a fully regrouped maelstrom Caught in a situation like this, the key is to stay calm, pop your guard. That gives you 5 seconds to assess your situation. Do I have the MP to live? Can I wait out my Hell's Ingress to escape? Are they wasting their limit breaks and crowd control? Notice I am sticking to the wall as I make my escape. I want to make it harder on them to target me, looping around to the other ramp, heading up top cutting through mid to try and make it back to my spawn and regroup. However, the Maelstrom had forced my team back to spawn, shutting down my escape. And for those that chased me, they wasted a few limit breaks to kill one low health reaper with nothing left. This engagement taught me that there are many decent players on the Maelstrom's team, wasting no time to dive a singled out target together, giving chase for a free kill, and judging by my spawn, they are the much more aggressive team to watch out for. Upon respawning, I am met with some spam in chat telling everyone to fall back. This is complete nonsense. This is complete nonsense as we were already pushed back to spawn. Now is the team's time to counter push. Fleeing now would just set the tone for the entire match. However, a quick look at the map, however, a quick look at the map would suggest that this player led half of the alliance down south, while the Maelstrom returned once again looking to boost their battle highs. So my plan here is to stall for time. The Maelstrom are overconfident right now. I jump right in to force their attention upon me. I use the Arcane Crest. Should it break, this will grant regen for those nearby. Alongside my guard, I want them burning through their abilities on me. As soon as my team come over the hill from the south, now is my time to go full offense. Using a quick burst of damage from my limit break, alongside the heavy effect of Grimswarf, we were able to walk straight through the maelstrom. However, now we cannot delay. This left the immortals free to head to center. We need to head over there right now for any chance of stopping them. And thankfully my team were on board. 
With our brave warrior leading the charge, diving dead center, shutting down the cap, I do not rush right in. I am looking to capitalize off any opening my team presents, always moving back and forth, juggling damage and keeping out of range. Once it becomes clear we are winning this fight, I rush down the ramp to hit the group with heavy, pushing myself into a battle high too. Together with the team, we continue the push south, claiming many more of the immortal team. However, I dove in too deep as the maelstrom came in with the perfectly timed flank. My team were able to escape, leaving me behind as they should. Meanwhile, the immortals took their sweet time to finish me off. A fresh respawn, I am now two deaths in and back on a level 1 battle high. This is where I decide to dial back on my aggressive Hell's Ingress dives. The majority of my team are north in the cave, however I redirect south to the new A rank. While both the Maelstrom and the Immortals are busy, best not to lose an easy zone to a smaller group that might be heading this way. Fortunately, the zone is met with zero contest. Looking back at my map, I can clearly see my team won the cave and are pushing across to the next objective. Many players now would want to hit the S rank to the south. However, based on my team and the Maelstrom being to the north, with the S rank almost unlocked, the Immortals are in full force. To push the S rank would be wasted effort. There is no chance we would push past in time, in order to storm before they cap. So my team's decision to hold north against the Maelstrom is the best outcome. Having changed up my playstyle a bit, I try to engage from the side, while pushing past to join my group. And with my limit break, I am aiming to force out a single target. With great success, pushing me back into a battle high too. A rather nice back and forth emerges, with the Maelstrom being forced back. As a smaller group forms up, I dive in with my limit break, resulting in my team landing a fast kill on their Dragoon. However, now the Maelstrom are rushing full aggressive, and I very quickly spot their Dragoon, limit breaking in from the back. Here is my risky play. I pop Arcane Crest and throw myself into the limit break. I wanted my shield to break to apply regen to my allies. This could hopefully aid in their escape. The moment I hear the shield break, however, I waste no time teleporting to safety, just as my team start their push to mid. At this stage, we have done well to counter the Maelstrom, but Lucky Spawns have allowed the Immortal Flames to catch up. We do not necessarily need to claim the mid-A rank from them. At the very least, we need to claim some kills, drop their score back down, and boost our own battle highs. I dive in first to aim some AoE damage, while taking the brunt of the incoming burst damage. This worked perfectly, as my Arcane Crest absorbed all of the damage, even while being knocked off the platform in a Red Mage limit break. Before I rejoin the fight, I helped to claim the kill on this bard, who has unfortunately become cut off. Mid is still up for grabs, and I aim to continue stalling if I can. Using my own limit break, I shut down the opposing Reaper pushing down our ramp. I do so because I believe he was about to do the same. This stops my team from being denied a recontest, and with my newly obtained battle high free, we were easily able to force the Immortals back down their ramp. Again learning from my mistakes, I hold back, just in time as the Maelstrom make their move. I retreat while engaging with Grim Swarth and Plentiful Harvest, as any follow-up damage could land a cheeky kill. And being the only player in their sight from my team, I knew the smart way to retreat is to drop down rather than go down the ramp. 
That way, I can guarantee my escape and elixir backup should I need it. After dropping down, you can see I was just hit with a warrior's limit break, meaning if I chose the ramp route and got crowd controlled, I would be dead for sure. Following this, the Maelstrom were able to obtain the A rank. However, a small group dove down. I engaged to help my teammate, forcing the few away. However, more dove me from behind. I used my own limit break for a chance to kill their dancer. And here is my next risky play. I saw their Reaper rushing in and predicted that he would limit break me. I used my Hell's Ingress to jump away a second too late, forcing me to dive in without control. Luckily, I had my Arcane Crest and plenty of MP. I bait the Maelstrom to think I am fleeing via the bridge, when in fact I just wanted distance between them and my portal, allowing me to escape from the Maelstrom. However, both a Paladin and a Dragoon continue to give chase. I stay close on purpose, to avoid the huge damage burst of a Dragoon's Wormwind Thrust. The closer you are, the less damage this will deal. Stalling out, I am able to regain some control, with my resources rebuilding, through a good use of Arcane Crest. I had hoped more of the team would have taken notice, who are currently engaged with the Maelstrom on the bridge, allowing the Immortals to flank, leading to my third and final death. I am also going to leave the commentary here, as we are approaching the final few minutes of this match, and I do not want to spoil the following spicy plays. See for yourself in real time how the following engagements unfolded. Thanks for tuning in, and happy hunting to all you Reaper players going in solo.